okay, you guys, it is, it's gnomes. It's gnomes, and let me just show you. Here it is. Um, these little guys are absolutely a blast, and there is a whole set of them, and they're doing all kinds of things, and they come with dies. So those of you who love your Copics and want to make a journal with Copics, feel free because you'll be able to cut these out, you'll be able to color them with your Copics, and then you'll be able to put them in your journal. So the journal is not just for watercolor, it is for whatever you want to put in there. So, <clears throat> great, I'm so excited you will be making that journal. You know, to be honest, I've had to warm up to these little guys. So I have been asked for gnomes for, oh gosh, I would say probably at least two years. And I first just thought they were a trend that wasn't going to last. And I thought, who's going to, you know, these little guys with a big nose and a big beard and a big head and a big hat. And I thought, well, that's just a really cute, fun thing right now, but it's not going to last. And so, you know what? It did last. And there are a lot of people <clears throat> that absolutely love these things. And I have really warmed up to them. So I've had absolutely a blast making this journal. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to uh, flip my camera around so that you guys can um, see what is in these sets and how we're going to uh, put them together in this really, really cute journal. And check out this absolutely amazing paper that Joel has put together. Like I said, he has just knocked it out of the park this time. Um, let me fix this right here. <clears throat> Make sure you guys can see everything. Okay, so first of all, let's go through this little journal and I'll show you how far I've gotten on it. Now, <clears throat> Uh, it is absolutely a blast to make because, um, you know, I love little things. I love little cute things, and this is just that exactly. So it's a lot of little cute things, and that's what's in this journal. So here we go with the front page, um, and I'll kind of go through these as um, we're going through the journal. So let me kind of put this aside. Here is the gnome set. Now, in the gnome set, you get a front and back because in the journal now we have front and back windows and fences. And so now there is a little front and back gnome with the dies that go with it. So the gnomes include stamps and dies. So all of these little guys can be cut out and then added to your journal. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine little gnomes in this set with their, with their dies. So this little guy, is this one right here and so you can kind of see the size of it <clears throat> and they're just they're really they're a really nice size because they'll work really well with your florals so your buckets and your pots they're small and so they're going to look small next to those um, buckets and pots and everything else so they're going to work really well with all of your watercolors which is why i made them this size um, because I like them to be part of the collection and that you'll be able to use them with what you have. So, you know, when you put them with something big, a big floral or a big bucket, it shrinks them down and makes them little. So that's all, that's all part of it. So that's why they're sized like they are. And they're just a great size for a card as well. So keep that in mind. If you don't make journals, these are great little cards to make. So <clears throat> also really, really fun. So that is on the cover. Here is the little mushroom set, and I love this. We're gonna be using, I use this one in the journal also, but this is the one right here on the front. And then this little guy right here is this one. So you can see how well they go together. They just work perfectly. They're super easy to color. Um, everything about these gnomes is easy because they're very, very simple. They don't have a lot of detail to them, and they don't have a face. <laughs> So sometimes the faces are the hardest things to color. And you know what? They've got a nose on a beard. So literally there's nothing to worry about. You color the nose in with a tiny little um, area for a mouth and you're good to go. So really, really simple. I mean, I love that about these guys is that they are simple to color. Great little set of mushrooms that will go with your little guys. So now let's open this up and let's go to the inside. So I've made a little pocket. Here's one of the little guys. He's just jumping. He's all excited. So easy he is to color. Super easy. We're going to make this. We're going to make this page and the cover today in this tutorial. 
Now, there also is a little set of structures, um, a little mushroom house, and this little cute, whimsical little fairy house. So these both come in here, as well as um, a little lamppost that you can put with your little creation. And I have stamped that in here into this front page as, long, as well as this little um, gnome right here. So this is a great set. It's super easy to color. Um, everything in this is really easy to color. Okay, remember what I said about big things next to your little gnomes? Here are some big flowers. And I purposely made them like that. They're very whimsical looking. They're very easy to color because they dwarf everything. So when the daisy is this big, that dwarfs this little mushroom house. So they're in, you know, grasses and florals. They're not really in trees because trees are too big. So they're down underneath the trees, in the grasses, in the flowers, kind of hidden. And so that's why these things are large. And that's why they're really kind of, um, they're very whimsical looking. Here's this little guy with uh, with his little pot of flowers. See how small he is next to this and next to these flowers? It just dwarfs everything down. So that's why the size of these little things. So you can see here's this one right here, this little leaf, leafy um, plant. And then here's this little flower. And they go both sides. So you can, you can swing them to either side. <clears throat> All right, here is the next batch of little things because I thought it would be so cute to put one of these little houses like in a little um, berry setting. So some little strawberries kind of coming off the side. And again, it dwarfs it. Uh, when you put these big things in, it dwarfs the little house and it makes it really small, kind of tucked away in some cozy little place. Um, when you make a, when you put a small vine on it, when you put some little florals on it, like what we use for, you know, our backgrounds, it makes this huge, it makes it huge, like a full size house. And it, it's a little gnome house. So it's got to be little. So um, the berries will be really fun to do. The strawberries, we're going to get into all of these. These little blackberries, these will be really fun. They'll also work great with what you have. So you can put these in your little pots and buckets and whatever. You can see on the front here how well they work. This is one of our um, <clears throat> really popular little buckets. It works great in here. So these will, be, these will be really, really fun to use just in general. So again, more big things. And I just thought some little berries hanging over just would be so cute with this little house. Uh, so then, little things. Treasure little things is what I've put on this little note here. There's a whole sentiment set of things that are little, make a little wish, uh, just a little note. Um, smile, every little victory, make a little progress, little moments, big memories. So things that are about little things that go with your little things journal. So this will be a really, really fun one to use, um, especially just a little note. I think that's so cute. Treasure the little things. These are little tiny things. And I just, I think that's so cute. So uh, let's move over to the next page. And here are, now here are the little mushrooms that are in the mushroom set. See how small they are? They're just great. And they fill up a page. So they're so cute on a page with their little red hats. I just love them. And I put them on here so that you could see how uh, simple a page can be. This is literally uh, one set of mushrooms, one little floral, and a little tiny bit of grass. Like that's it. And these go to the left and to the right. So let me show you. So in this little set, here they are. This one swings to the left, this one swings to the right. And you can see how they go, kind of go this direction. And they're so cute together. And literally the easiest things to color, you know, a little red hat. And now you can make them whatever color you want. They don't have to be red. But I don't know, there's something whimsical about the red hat and the white dots. So I stayed pretty traditional on that. Um, okay, here is the little front and back guy. Now, I did not um, put him in here permanently because I just want to show you the back. Is he just the cutest? Look at his little chubby bod and his little booty back here. Um, he's just really cute. Like I said, I've really... Um, you know, I've come around with these little guys and they're very endearing to me now and probably because I had so much fun creating them and now putting them in the journal. Um, look at this paper. I just love it. It's a very um, vintage-y. It's really warm. 
Um, and that's why I put it, I use the craft paper on my journal because it just really, um, it really goes together. And I love, love this color palette. It's still light, which I love, but it's very vintagey. And I just think it's just perfect for these little guys. So now he could be either direction. You could glue him in this way and then show him on the other side. Um, you could tuck him in behind um, the little fence like this, which would also be really cute. So up to you how you want to do that. I just, like I said, I put him in here with a paper clip so that I could take him out and show you um, just how cute he is. So that's part of the gnome set. That's the front and back, and it comes with the dies. And basically what you're doing, and we'll get this into this one, uh, we'll do these pages in the next tutorial. So I'll show you how to color him and then put him, um, cut him out, put him together. But basically it's two pieces, front and back. Color it, die cut it, and glue it together. And you've got this little character who's absolutely just the cutest. So, uh, and this little paper in here, which we'll, I'll get to that and show you, it has a little wood grain to it. It's so cute. It's perfect for this little fence. Um, I love it. And I think it, it works really well here. It's not too dark and overwhelming, but you can definitely see that it's a little fence because again, the focus is not the paper. The paper is enhancing the art. So it's really important that it's not too detailed. Um, <clears throat> that the patterns aren't too big, but that they offset and they add to the watercolor um, art that is in the journal, which is what it's all about. It's um, it's it's being able to put in uh, something that cohesively goes together and uh, create this little work of art that is just so fun to get out and just just thumb through. And you know what? My old journals, I'm st I still add to them. Little things here and there. When I get them out and look at them, I think, oh, you know what would be so cute in here is a little this or that. Um, so I still do that. I still add to them. So now let's go to the back side. And you can see through here, is this just the cutest? This little, um, this little mushroom house is part of the mushroom set. And it's this little guy right here. It's so simple. And I, I just wanted to make a really simple background that he is in front of because obviously he's big and this is little, but we can set it in the background. We can totally set it in the background and then it could be his little place back there. So that's what I did. I just cut out a rectangle. We're going to, we're going to be making these. So we're going to go through this page and this page in the next tutorial, um, next week on a live. And then we'll kind of go from there and see whether to, um, record the rest or do one or two more lives. So we'll just kind of play that by ear. But here's the back of the little fence. So when you, when you're making this, you're cutting the center out and then you're cutting two of these little pieces. The little fence is a front and back. And you are going to cut one and cut another. And then you have a finished page on both sides. So you can see through the little gnome back here. Um, but you could also put him, you know, on the front too. And then this little scene. So this is the simple scene. This is the basic simple scene. And you can see the little path that runs through here. It works great for this. Absolutely great. And I tuck this little house back in here. Uh, it's just so cute. See the big flowers back in the background? Again, big flowers dwarf these little structures. So putting big things in like that, normally we would never do that. But in this case, it's really essential because it adds to the overall uh, visual of it that it's a tiny little house tucked down in a little meadow. Um, I took these little mushroom heads and I, that's these, these, these guys right here. And I just stamped them just right across the front. I think they turned out so cute. And it, what it does when you do that is it sort of creates a, um, a little hollow, um, you know, a cozy little place. And these things kind of frame the whole like little structure and everything in here. Uh, putting the foliage up here also kind of frames it in and makes it really kind of private in there and tucked away. So <clears throat> we're going to make this. This was really, really simple and really, really fun. And especially with uh, the little fence and the little guy in the foreground. I think it's so cute. And you could do that with any um, scene. So, you know, with your little front, front and back kids, you can tuck a little structure back in here and do the same thing. Because the cute thing about it is that you can see through it. That's the cute thing about it. 
you can see through it and it makes everything uh, multi-dimensional, which, you know, I love. I love things that are three-dimensional, multi-dimensional, that we can see through and it just adds to the whole um, specialness of the journal. It really does. <clears throat> so all of these things kind of contribute to this beautiful work of art. So this is as far as I've gotten, but I have a billion ideas for the rest and we're going to finish it off. But I also want to show you something else. So um, <clears throat> I also want to show you something else. Now, well, first, you know what? First, let's look at the paper because this is absolutely, I mean, I hate to even say this because I I love that those last paper packs, but this might be my favorite one because of all the great um, colors and variations and patterns and how simple they are. Look how cute these little mushrooms are. So cute. Uh, the little hearts, the little foliage, these little hearts, the stripes, so many stripes and dots, the little, the little um, florals back in the background. And on the back, more, more of them. So there are two each of all of these. These are the backs of all of those. So if you love the front and the back equally well, you have two. You have two pages. So you don't have to worry about um, using up all your plaids or your dots and then not being able to use the front. So you have two pages of each. And there are 24 sheets in this um, paper pack, just like the others. I love this so much. And I think it is so cute with all of the reds and greens that are part of this little whimsical set. It just makes it really whimsical by adding all of these um, separate little, um, you know, these little patterns in here. And they're small. They're small. And every single uh, piece in here is usable. So it's not, you know, uh, random things that are in here. It's for... Uh, these little journals and four card making. So every piece in here is is something that you could use in your journal. Okay, so those seven things. So the paper pack, uh, the little mushroom set, um, <clears throat> the florals, the little houses, the gnomes, and these have the dies with them. Um, not these two. The little sentiments. So the little things sentiment set and all of these little berries, those are part of the bundle. So you can get that. It's available right now. It's a significant discount. So if you absolutely want to make this, I will be using uh, exclusively this paper from the paper pack in the tutorials. So um, that will be helpful to you too. You can also buy everything individually. You can do that too. Maybe you just want the paper pack. Maybe you just want the gnomes and you want to put it together yourself. Absolutely, you can do that. Um, this is just to help you if you want to create what I'm making. And then, of course, you can um, do whatever else you want to add to it and make it your own. Absolutely make it your own. Okay, so here's the other thing that I want to show you is that maybe you're not a gnome fan. You know, maybe you um, don't absolutely love gnomes. Uh, there are other things that you can use. So, <clears throat> for example, this set this is the fairy cubby set, and these little fairies will be so cute. They're a perfect size. So let me show you how big they are. This is the size that they are. They would be perfect to put multiples of these in your journal, and they will be tiny in here. So they'll be so cute. I'm going to add some of these in to the, um, the rest of the journal just because I think they're just going to add so much. And they're do there's there's one, two, three, four, five, six of these little fairies. And I think um, they will be adorable. Now this little house, it's a little big for the journal. You could do it. Uh, you could probably put it on the center page if you just use this section of this little house. But I love that these things um, <clears throat> can be used for other things. So this this came with a set of dies. So the dies are included with this little set. You can see here this big big die cuts out this little the little house, fairy house, opens the doors, the windows, which would also be really cute in your journal. But all of these little fairies come with dies to cut them out. So they would be so cute to just add here and there uh, in your journal. You know, flying over, you know, the little fence or something. Uh, I can just think of a hundred ways to use that. This is the five, three, four, five uh, fairy set. This it will be so cute 
um, in this journal, in this whimsical journal. And maybe you can just put one gnome in or two gnomes, and then you can use something else um, like this. And of course, you could um, use the sentiment, you know, with them. Uh, here's another one. And I actually used one of these because I thought it was so perfect. Now, Kendra just did a full tutorial on this mushroom cubby set. And it is so cute. Now, this little snail is from this set. So let me show you what is in it. And it also has a gnome. And this gnome is the same style as the gnome set. So it, and it, and size wise too. So it's very, very similar to the gnomes that are in the gnome set. So you can use this interchangeably with all of the other gnomes. Um, it comes with all of these cute bugs, which again will dwarf everything. So when you put a little bee uh, flying by this house, look how tiny this house becomes. And I, I just think these will be great. I'm going to be using these too. So here's, like I said, here's the little snail that I put on this little sentiment uh, banner right here. And I think he's so cute. Super easy to watercolor. Um, I'll add uh, one or two of these into the journal. But check out the coloring tutorial that Kendra did. I, I want to say it's been about a month ago. And you can see it on the Facebook um, in the videos. Scroll down to about a month ago and you'll see Kendra's um it's called the uh, Mushroom Cubby uh, uh, Mushroom Cubby Tutorial, and she watercolors these little bugs, and um, you can see how to do it. But these also come with dyes. So all of these little characters, all of these little bugs and bees and everything else come with little dyes. So they're really easy to add, like this one. I just cut him out and added him to my little banner. So these, these will be really great as an addition to um, this little whimsical journal. And again, big things. Big things dwarf these little, these little structures. Here is another one. This one also. So maybe you, uh, maybe you just want to uh, not have any fairies or gnomes, and you just want to make it um, really, um, you know, a fantasy of who lives in this little house. And you could do these little birds because they're also a great size. Let me show you how big these are. These are a great size because, again, they dwarf this little, these little structures, and you can use them. So on the very front, I used them in here. See how cute they are? They're just a great size to use in the journal. And there are one, two, three, four, five of these little birds, and they um, also come with dies. So you can cut them out and you can use these in your journal. And maybe you have some of these already. Get them out. If you're going to make this whimsical journal, get these sets out if you have them because you are going to love um, adding them into your little whimsical journal. Okay, also, here's a couple more. If you have this set, you can use these little pixies. Look how cute they are. Here's the size. Here's the actual size. And I just put one on a little mushroom just to show you. But how cute will they be in here? So it doesn't have to be exclusively gnomes. It could be uh, any of these little guys. And also, these little mushrooms, same style, again. So they can also be used interchangeably with the, um, with the little mushrooms that are in the mushroom set. So this little guy sleeping underneath, he'd be so cute in here. Um, all of these things will work. These two, the little hobbit doors, how cute will these guys be in here? So I just, you know, I have so many um, things that could be used for a whimsical journal that I just, I had to do it. I had to make one because I think uh, that so many of these things that you have already will work and be so cute. Look at this little mailbox. Is that just the cutest? It'll be so cute in here. Absolutely will. So take those things out and, you know, put a gnome or two in here. And if you're not really into gnomes, um, get the little structures and just put in whatever you want to put in here. Uh, it's going to be really cute. So there we go. We've got six pages that I can show you. Um, we are going to, like I said, in this tutorial, we're going to be doing the cover, this one. And then we're going to do the first page. So we're going to color this little um, this little mushroom house. Now, I purposely changed the top because I want you to see that you can use a different color. So I've got red mushroom tops in here all throughout and in this little house. But... You don't have to. You could do a really cute blue top. I think it turned out so cute. 
And I love the red shutters, the red, the red uh, chimney, and it still goes with everything. And this little card, I love putting a little card like this into the pocket. Um, and I'll show you how I made this. We're gonna we're gonna assemble. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna stamp these things, um, these watercolors, and then we're gonna assemble it into into a journal at the very end. So, everyone, what do you think? Um, okay, you guys, love it. Love all your comments. So so encouraging. I will be really excited to go back and look through all of them and see what you guys are saying about this. Um, right now, we're going to get on to the project. So I'm going to, you know, get my um, get these things out of the way. And maybe I wonder if I could just um, leave that in. I think it's too big. Um, it's too big, but we're going to um, we're going to do these three little watercolors. So they're really simple. And let me just drop this down a little bit. Fix this little thing here so that it's straight. It wants to just tip. Okay, I think we're I think we've got it. All right, so we're going to start out with, um, let's just start out with the cover, and then we'll go to the little guy, and then we'll go to the little structure. So the first thing, I, I went ahead and pre-stamped these and die cut these, and when we go to assemble them, I'll tell you um, what I used. Obviously, this is just a little circle and an oval. So just really simple that can go into, um, into your journal. This one actually um, is from this set. Uh, which I use all the time now. Uh, this set, because these large ones, so it comes in, it comes in sets like this. There are two of them. The large die on the outside is for layering the cover. So these little pieces here, so you can see this large die cuts these large pieces, and then you can just layer them. So they're they're the exact same uh, width or a uh, height. And so you could layer them easily without trimming and making sure that everything uh, lines up. The smaller ones that are in the center, so you've got one, two, and then it comes with, uh, each one comes with a little bookmark. So here's the other one. And these little ones that are on the inside, these small ones, those are for the pages. So this one here is for layering the pages on the inside of your journal. So the outside is for the cover, they're larger, and then these small ones that are here are for the inside for layering. And it's just a it's just a great set. I use it all the time because it kind of takes all the guesswork out of lining it up and cutting things even, you know, to fit. So I use that to cut this one, and um, and then I use these all of these to do the same. So it's super easy. It's it's super easy, and I'll I'll show you exactly how I did it once we um, once we get to the assembly part. Now to do these, I only used a couple more things. So besides actually using the stamps in the um, in the flower set, uh, I just used these. So the little grass right here, and the little vine right here. So I mean, just there, it doesn't take a lot. Uh, it doesn't take a lot. Just those, just those stamps. And then I used from the flower set. I used these, uh, the front and or the right and the left of this little vine. And then the flower that kind of leans to the right. And then here are the two that we're using from the other sets. So simple, really, really simple. Now I went ahead and pre-stamped uh, everything just for time's sake uh, because I knew we were going to go through the journal, wanted to explain everything to you. So for time's sake, I went ahead and I just stamped these. So I stamped them in uh, the two colors. So the mushrooms, I stamped in the two colors, the dark blue. Uh, 565 first over the um, over the image and then 969 stamped it off twice and then stamped these just in the brown and the little gnome just in the brown stamped off twice so you want to stamp the little gnome first and then I cut a um, I cut a mask for him so normally I just lay a piece of post-it tape down but I just cut a mask because I wanted to make sure that I got him in the right place and you can use a stamp positioner or you could use your stamp platform also uh, to make sure you get it in the right place. 
So, uh, and then I stamped it over the top, took the mask off, and there you go. Stamp these in next to it. So super easy. Same with this one, just in the brown. Uh, this one in the two colors. So just really, really simple. So let's start out with this, this little guy. And um, let me just see if I can zoom in a little. If I zoom in too much, I feel like it focuses too much on my hand and makes it too, uh, makes it blurry. Okay, so now I've got my water out and my brush, and I'm going to be using my number one brush too. So I'm gonna start out with my number four, and then we're gonna be switching back to the number one because um, these are such small little, little things. So I'm just going to start out just by pulling the color out of the lines, just kind of follow this line around here on this side because the cap comes over the top. And these are just little um, creases kind of underneath. Same with this under here. I mean, there's just, you don't have to do a lot. The color of the mushroom stamps is in the line. So you don't have to add any more color to that. There we go. And then this little guy, we don't have to do much to him because his lines are really small and we're gonna add color to him. So we don't have to do a lot. We can put um, a little color underneath his hat, like so, and that's it. That's all we have to do. And now I'm gonna switch over. Well, let's just, let's get some color on the palette first. Let me move these aside. And let's get some color onto the palette. And here's the red I'm using, the 856. It's a, um, it's a little bit of a uh, warmer red, so it has a little more um, yellow in it, and it goes along with the warmer colors. So 856 on that one. And then um, I'm using the warm blue, so 526. These are really the basic colors for the gnomes that I've used. Uh, 526. And then the green this green, so the 249, and you can use the other green too, doesn't, doesn't matter, it's just your preference, whichever one you wanna use. So this is 249, I just love that, I love that color green. And then some, a little bit of gray, so N79, doesn't really matter what gray you use, we're just gonna use a little bit of gray on his shoes and on his beard. So N79 on this one. And then for the flesh tone, so I'm using the 912 for the flesh tone, but you could, you know, you could use a light brown also. That will work just fine. So let me put this, we don't need a ton of this, but this is 912. And I think, I think that's all we need for him. Got the gray. Okay, so let's, Let's color it. The, um, I'm gonna use my larger brush on the hat uh, and then my smaller brush when we get down into these little details. If you can, it's better to use your larger brush because you're going to get a smoother uh, finish with the brush uh, than you will with a tiny one. If you use a brush that's too small for the surface, uh, too small for the space, you're going to get a lot, of, um, a lot more brush lines. So always keep that in mind. Um, this is just a little big, this whole area, the red area is just a little big for this tiny little brush. It's just a little big. Now when you get down to the nose and the little feet, the hands, that kind of thing, then this is a must. But if you can, if you can get, um, if you can use your four, you're going to, you're going to get a much smoother, um, you're going to get a much smoother finish. So I'm starting over here on the side. He's kind of turned a little bit. So I feel like it's going to be darker, kind of darker over on this side. And so here's where kind of the highlight is. And so I can kind of just move it over. You still want to see that highlight, kind of see that highlight in the middle. But as he's coming, you can see that the light is kind of coming down this direction because he's kind of turned. And then you're just going to just keep coming on, especially with the red. It takes a couple of coats to get a really dark, nice red on here. So just, you know, let it dry and then let it come back and do it again. 
Okay, so let's go on now. We're gonna do his coat, and I think we can switch over now to the small brush. And you know, this is just what I'm using for color on here, but you can, um, you know, these are little wood gnomes, little garden gnomes, so they can be wearing whatever color. Maybe you want something more muted, like brown, more brown tones. Um, you can do that. You can put whatever color you want in here, but they're really fun to color because they're really tiny and they just, they turn out so cute. And there's just, there's no stress involved with them. Just, just little areas, do little areas at a time. And even though they're small, you still want to um, stay in each little section. Okay, so now let's go on to, oh, we missed the brown. That's what we missed. I knew there was another color we missed. So we're gonna use the, um, the 947, this really warm brown. And we're gonna use that for his little pants. And then, you know, again, you can make it as dark as you want to uh, just by going over it. See how um, this little tiny brush just gets into these tiny little areas. Um, and it's just, it's so fun to color these. And just take your time. Like, you know, it's, it's fun to enjoy the process. You don't have to rush through it. And then let's get his little flesh tone on. So he's got this giant nose, you know, that just sticks out. <laughs> it's just under his hat and he's just got a giant nose. So we'll color that and his little hand here. And you can come back again. Now I left just a tiny little highlight on it uh, and I'm going just darker right underneath. So you can kind of see that little highlight right at the top. All right, so now let's do his little boots and his belt, which I'm just gonna do gray. So I'm just gonna put a little gray in here for his belt and his little boots. And then I'm gonna mix a little um, of this gray with the brown and get the bottom of his shoes. It's still kind of a gray, but it's not the same color as, the, as his pants. Okay, and now we just have to take a little bit of this um, gray, just a little bit with water, and just make just run a line, see along his beard, just to get a little shadow because you know it's white, and it's going to have a little shadow on it. You can add a few little um, marks on here too if you want to, and that's. You know what, that's about it on him. We're gonna come back in with a twin tone and just get some of these little detailed areas, but let's go on to the mushroom. And I'm gonna switch back to my big brush and get some of this red and just carefully brush this on. Just be careful you don't touch um, the lines of this little guy. And you can leave just a tiny little space too. If you're afraid you're gonna to touch those lines, you can just leave a tiny little space. Um, that isn't gonna hurt a thing to do that. And you know, this is so, this area is so narrow in here that we don't, we don't really have to worry about a highlight. Don't worry about that, just get the color in. And then we're gonna just let this dry a little bit and we're gonna come back over it because we want this to be a really vibrant red. And then we can do these little caps, mushroom caps. Let's 
little one down here. So cute. I don't know, something about um, <laughs> making something whiz whimsical that just kind of, you know, makes your day. I don't know. It does for me. I just, I love little characters and little things. And I just think they're so fun to make. And they just, they just kind of bring a lot of happiness. They're so cute. Okay, so we've got that done. Now, I'm going to add just a little bit of this, um, this brown onto the stem of this bigger mushroom. This one right here. And just kind of blend that out a little bit. Doesn't have to be super dark. Like so. Okay, so now let's see, what do we want to do next? Let's get, um, let's grab the Twin Tone. Let me move this out of the way a little bit. And I'm going to just make sure that this in here, where this little stem connects, this is dark. This is dark in here. And then this, these little lines, especially right where they start to come out, those need to be kind of dark. See how that just changes everything? You know, when you can get these dark lines in there and you could put a couple more in too, if you want to, um, you know, you can put a little extra detail in here and make another little crack in the stem. Same with these, you know, where they attach to the little mushroom cap and where they hang over, you know, that's gonna be darker under there. And just getting some of this dark color in, just really, it just cha kind of changes everything. And then his little, um, his little jacket, we can just really kind of make this little, um, where his jacket is, we can put a little button in here Kind of darken his little belt a little bit and then let's get his um his little mouth and under here where his hat is like so and if you see you think any of your lines kind of got washed out a little bit you can put those back in with your twin tone. Totally fine to do that. Okay, cute. All right, let's put some uh, background in, a little background sky in. And I'm gonna do that with my blue, which, you know, I use this warm blue because it just, it looks whimsical to me. Now you don't have to use this color for the sky. You can use any color, but it just, it seems really like vintagey and I don't know, I just, if I'm doing something like this, I'm always picking this color for the sky. Okay, that's it. And then let's put in uh, some little grasses. A few little grasses in here. Just kind of walk it down. You know, it's always a little more interesting when there is an angle. And I don't know if I could actually make the grass straight across now because I, I've made it at an angle so many years. Now you wanna pull this grass up. And again, it's the same concept of, you know, dwarfing things. We want to make all of these little things look small. Or big, we wanna make all of these things look big. the grasses that is and that dwarfs the little mushrooms and the little gnome makes him look big okay and I think I'm just going to add a little bit more of this gray underneath here just because um, I like to have a mix of color uh, I just, you never want just one color um, on things because nothing is just one color. And so if you want it to look realistic, you kind of got to, you know, just get a few more 
colors in there. And I think we could add a little shadow here also. Um, just kind of underneath where that mushroom kind of is hanging over. Like so. Okay. I think that's great. All right, let's go ahead and move that aside and um, we'll add the white paint. We're going to add some white paint to it um, to get all of our little dots in. But let's go ahead and do um, do this little guy next. And I'll set that aside for now. So let's do this little guy. You guys already know how to color a gnome. I mean, it's going to be the same exact way. So if the area is big enough that you could use your number four, use your number four uh, brush. Uh, be sure to leave, you know, some kind of highlight. Now he's kind of turned looking up. So, you know, it's almost at the top of his head. So just like this. Make sure also when you go from your red, when you're using your red and you're going to another color, make sure you really rinse off your, uh, your brush because um, that red will want to stay on there. Okay, so now let's do the little, do his little nose. Same, same color. And his hands. And I switched to my little brush. And I, you know, I didn't even pull the color out of the lines. You really don't have to with these little ones. Just have, just stamp it, stamp it off. And then um, just add the color to it. Take some blue now and do his little coat. And, you know, you can, because you have dyes with these, you can cut him out and um, just put him anywhere in this journal. Tuck him in anywhere. He's so cute. Do his little pants. Get them just a little bit darker, like so. And then his little boots. More gray boots. And, you know, mix a little brown, you know, with that gray. And get underneath his foot. Okay, and I think, did I have anything else? Oh, I had a little bit of green underneath his feet, but you know, that's totally up to you if you wanna do that. We don't even have to. So I'm gonna go back here now, and then um, actually, I can see his little sleeve here, and I didn't get that. Okay, now we need a little more red on his hat. So I'm gonna switch back to my red or my big brush and go over this again. Okay, looks pretty good. All right. So now we can just put, um, actually, we can just put a little shadow, you know, and you could turn him however you want to. Maybe you've got him like this. <laughs> he's really, he's really just kind of prancing along here. So you can put a little, um, a little green shadow under there if you want to. I just keep it really simple. And a little bit of sky. And you can, you know, you can um, stamp, you can stamp and color it first and then cut it out. 
Um, I cut it out and then um, I'm coloring it be just to just to be able to get it in the journal to have it all done so that we can assemble it. But you know, do it however works best for you. Okay, so let's get our twin tone out. And we're gonna just put a line under his little pants, a little dark line, and let's put a little line in his coat again. And under his little hat. Okay, and there he is. I mean, how simple was that? That was just so easy. You could um, also make it a little decorative by taking your bullet tip and putting some little stripes on his hat. That would be really cute too, to do that. See how cute that is? So easy. All right, let's go on now to, let's go on to the little house, the little mushroom house. And we are going to start by pulling the color um, out of the lines. And we're gonna pull it under here. Cause again, that cap, the mushroom cap is hanging over the top. And we're gonna get the insides. This is a little extra, a little basement door here. The inside of the window. And just, you know, this is just the first step. And we're gonna see the fronts, just by coloring in, you can see the fronts of these steps. See how three-dimensional that looks now, just doing that part. Okay, that's a good start. So now let's go ahead and um, add some color. And we're gonna do that with, the, with this blue. So we're going to add some blue to it. And like I said, you can make the roof whatever color you want. If you like the traditional red, you can do that. And, you know, with a large space like this, just make sure you're using a bigger brush. Even a six. You could get your six out for this. Uh, because you're going to get a much smoother finish with a larger brush. Now stay in each section. A highlight on the top of this. Definitely a highlight on the top. Okay. Cute. All right, so let's keep adding the color here. We're gonna do the, the little door. And we're just gonna color this. This is at 947, that warm brown. You know, there's, it's such a simple palette. Like there's just, there's not very many colors in it. And you can change that up also if you want to. And let's do this little door down here, this little basement door. Who knows who who knows who lives down here? Some extra little person. And this little window, this could be a window or it could be a little shutter. So I I just um just to do, show you something different, you can color this in solid and add a, a couple of little details. And this could be just a little shutters, a little closed window. So now let's take some of this red. And it just left a tiny bit of a highlight on the top. Tiny bit. Add a little more red there. And let's add some red to the chimney. So, and let's see, is there anywhere else? So now let's go ahead and add 
um, a little shadow under here where this is kind of hanging over underneath. And then we need a shadow uh, under the door, this little dark shadow. And then we can put one up here And we can put one here. And that's gonna just set those little doors back into, um, into the opening. And then we want this little area here to be darker also. And this, this little um, windowsill, that's gonna have that's gonna have a shadow under it, just like that. And you know, all of these little steps, those also will have a shadow. And it really, really, it really makes a difference to get that in. Now on the you know on the windowsill or uh, the window panes, you can you can put whatever color you want in here. You can use your brush or you can use your, um, your fine tip. Um, I usually just use my brush and then the most of the time, it's not perfect, most of the time, but it's okay. Because you get the idea that it's little window panes. You totally get that. And then we need a bit of a shadow in here also. Just to kind of set that window back in there. Okay, so now let's get the twin tone out because now we need to get these details in. So the door, little doorknobs, leave just a little highlight on there. See how that just kind of pops everything out. Like so, you could put in a little um, hinge in there if you want to. Uh, same with this one. Put a little hinge in there. Now this one, we're just gonna draw a straight line down with a little knob on either side. See how cute that is? And then these can just have little door ha little handles like so. And then these little cracks, we want to really darken these in. And you know, you can add another one if you want to. And the, um, and the door. So maybe we want to have some detail on the door. And maybe this one too. So adding all of these little details, it just, it really changes everything. Okay, how cute. And then, you know, under here, you could kind of finish this little door off with couple little little lines. You know, if you pay attention to the details and you just take that extra minute and put it in, um, it makes a huge difference. Just take a minute and just put it in. Okay, there we go, how cute. I think that turned out great. And we could also, you know what? We could add some details to this too with the bullet tip. And there we go. And maybe, maybe we just take some of this red and we can make some little bricks.
uh, like so. Cute. All right, so now let's add some foliage, but let's do the um, let's do the sky first. Just a little bit in here. Just let's get a little bit of the sky. In. Us don't touch the red. Oh my goodness, that would be a disaster. That will just bleed right out. So we'll just put a little bit of this in. Just, you know, push a little bit of the color around. Don't worry about it too much. And then let's get some grasses in first. And we'll just, we'll just put a few of these little grasses kind of in here where the little stairs are. And then um, out here, just kind of out here, because we want to kind of leave a little pathway uh, where this little door is. But when you make these things small too, you don't have to worry so much about the background and everything else. Just make them small. It's a little structure and then cut it out with a little circle or an oval and you're good. You're good to go. And I'm just taking, I'm taking a little bit of this green. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of this green in the background. Like so. And let's see, we want to put in uh, some of these, these little guys. So we're going to uh, use that green. And I don't need the whole thing. I'm just going to kind of stamp it in, you know, once, like maybe once like that. And then I'm going to put this one um, over here, maybe a couple times. And these are just, they're really whimsical looking. And you just, you just kind of fill them in. It doesn't matter what green you use. You could use this cool green or you could use um, a warmer green. And you could add a little more color to them too. But they're cute. And then I think I'm just gonna add a little more grass, maybe just right here. Just a little bit more of this color. Okay, and then let's add this little flower in. Let's see if I have room for it. And I'm gonna use my positioner just to make sure that I have enough space and where it's going. So I'm just gonna ink this in the dark blue. So I wanna leave it white. So I'm just gonna use the dark blue on the petals and then the green on the stem. And just put that using my positioner and then I'll be able to kind of see where I can place it. Okay, that's gonna work right there. And you can see I don't need much of the stem at all. And I'm just gonna use a little tiny bit of it and I'm gonna just put that right there. That'll be the perfect spot. And I don't need to re-ink it, but I am gonna take some of the um, stem off. Just hop on it a little bit. And there we go. So because it's, it's gonna be white, we're just putting in the shadow of the petals. So just like that. And then uh, we need a center, so we can just use a little yellow. This is just the 993 yellow. And I'm gonna just add a little center here. And then finish that little stem. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we need to get out 
our white paint. This, you know, I can't tell you how important these shadows are on the doors to set them back into, into the little house. Same with the window. It just is so important to put those in. They're kind of, they're a little too intimidating to do, but um, you can, if you can get past the fear and just do it. And we, you know what? We can put in a little, a little stone path here too. Okay. All right, we are good. All right, so now I'm gonna move my palette out of the way and get all my little pieces here and see if we need to add any white. I don't think we need to add any white to this one. Um, let's add some white to these two. So I'm gonna take my PH Martins Bleed Proof White that I can't live without now and dip my brush in water. And I'm just going to dip the tip in here because I wanna make these little um, dots onto my little mushroom. And these little guys down here, just, just a really simple little little dot like that. And these two, let's put some, let's put some dots in here, even though we're using the blue, still cute. I'm gonna just dip my brush and get it just a little wetter um, so that I can move the paint a little better. So don't be afraid to add uh, water to your paint. Um, I do it all the time. Okay, and let's just, you know what? Let's add some little white. Little white flowers in here too. And I think because um, I got, I don't think that flower looks quite white enough. I can just brush on a little white paint. So I kind of stamped it over the sky. And so it's picked up some of the blue from the sky. And so I can just add a little white paint to it. And now it's so cute. And if you, you know, if you're not happy with how your, <laughs> your window turned out, you can just also go back in and straighten up your, Straighten up your lines. So I also do that. Put a little highlight on there. And that is it. Isn't that cute? Turned out so cute. And this little guy, I don't think we have to do anything with him. You know what I, I did miss, I am missing, is his shadow. This little guy's shadow on his beard. So I'm going to pick up just a little bit of gray. and get that little shadow on there. That would just really bug me. Okay, so now we're gonna let that dry a little bit. And I wanna just make, actually, I'm just gonna make a little, that little detail on his hat too. Okay, there we go. So now let's uh, close up the paint. And if you ever forget to wash your brush off, because I do that multiple times, I set it down after using the white paint, it's not ruined. So even if it's been a day or two, just run it under the water and it cleans right up. It's just, it's amazing stuff. Okay, so now let me, let me clear out all my mess and set this over to the side. And I'm gonna just move this up so you can see a little better. 
and we're going to assemble uh, this journal now. So I've got all my little pieces. I've got a uh, page cut. I've got my cover. And then here's all my little pieces um, to add to it. So let me zoom out here. And here's all my little pages that I've cut. So let me set that aside and let's assemble this journal. So if you've never done this before, uh, let me just show you. So you're going to cut two of these. This is the die, the big die that comes in the journal die set. So it's big die like this. And you're gonna cut two of these. You're gonna cut two of them and then you're gonna see the score line here and you're just gonna fold, see along the score line and that creates the spine of your journal. All right, like that. And you're gonna do the same on the other one. Just like this. There we go. And then these two, um, these two are glued together. So the rounded edge, that's the, that's, the, um, that's the top of the journal, the right side. So they go like this. They don't go like, um, they don't go like this with the sharp side. They don't go like this. They go the other way. So the sharp side is glued together. So these two on the back, they overlap. These two overlap and they're just glued together. So just like this. So let's do it. Let's glue that together. So I'm gonna add some glue now to this. And then this is going to sit right along that score line. Just like this. And then this should line up perfectly on the back and it does. And now we have our journal. So this is the cover. So the case where all of the pages are and all the magic happens. And now we're gonna glue the page in. So I've got the first page this is all part of the die set too. So there's a die that cuts the page out and it has a score line here, just like this. So we're just gonna bend, bend this along the, um, along the score line. So like this. And then I just bend it forward like this. Now the, the lip or the L, it has to sit in your journal like this. You have to be able to see that, that line. So not like this. Not like this, the other way, like this. This is how it goes in here because there's always multiple things in here, like you know pockets and things. And so we have to have enough space to have those things in here when we put multiple layers, that's why. So now we're gonna add some glue to this. And I would suggest, or really strongly suggest, you use glue and strong glue when you're gluing in your pages because you're gonna flip through this a hundred times and so will the person that you give it to and you don't want the pages to come out. So you're going to, you know, line this up along the score line and it's going to glue in just like this. Whoops. Let's add a little more glue to that. Just moved it too soon. So you don't want that to happen. You don't want anything to um, make that page come out. There we go. So now we're gonna let that dry just for a minute. And we're going to uh, look at our other pieces here. So this one in this page is going to attach to this little frame. And I just cut out a bigger one uh, behind it. And I just think that really, it makes a really cute frame and it kind of sets it off the paper. So let's glue these together. There's so many different frames and things that you can do in these journals. It's just, it's so much fun. That's why, you know, when I go back through it, I always um, add things because I think of something else. And I think, oh, that would be so cute to add this in it. And I didn't think of that when I was making it. Okay, does anybody, you know what, while I'm doing this, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I'm, look, I'm scrolling through all your comments now. Um, 
Yes, this is the this is the um, the glue I use, art glitter glue. Uh, you can see how well used it is. I mean, it's just it's it's well used, but this is great stuff. Comes with a little tiny point like this, and you want to make sure that you comes with a little stainless steel um, pin that you want to always remember to put back in. So because it's stainless steel, it doesn't rust. So that's why it's important not to lose it. I've lost this thing so many times, looking all around for the white or the yellow tip in the midst of piles of paper. Okay, so now this should be all um, attached. So let's do the cover. Let's do the cover. I'm just gonna lay it out flat. That'll be the easiest way. And we're gonna start out with this piece. See how perfectly that fits on here. That's those little dies, those little additional dies that cut out all the layering pieces. I think that is so cute. You can also use this side. So maybe you cover that and you want to use this side. So you've got all these different edges that you can use to layer. And you know, the layering is what makes it just makes it so cute. Now, if you want to create a pocket, uh, you just want to um, glue the outside edge. So like this. So for example, if you do this and you just glue it on like this, make sure it's straight. Um, you've got a little pocket so you could tuck something in here. That's so cute to do that. You could just tuck a little special note or a little bookmark or some special little surprise thing. And that would just be so cute. Now we're going to glue this one on. And I'm just going to put it uh, right here so that I can see the red on the back side. And again, you can do the same thing with this one. You can make a little pocket with this one too. And tuck in, you know, all the little pockets, you know, it's just a little extra bonus surprise. That makes it so cute. An unexpected thing. And now our little guy goes on the top. And you could move him all the way to the edge like that if you want to, or you could you know, put it right in the center, you know, just however you want to do it. Same with this one. You can make this a pocket. I'm just, I'm so into these little, you know, surprise little pockets and things. I just think that's, that's what I add. Things like that, you know, to my journals because um, I love the extra little something that is unexpected. Now I just, I just put it, you know, so that you can only see the red I think that's so cute. But see what I mean by now you could tuck something in here like that on all of these. That would be so cute. Now here's where you could add the little birds if you wanted to. And let's see, do I have one? I have an extra little bird. I think I do. And this little guy, he could just be right hanging out right down here in the front. How cute. Let's just put him on. So cute. Maybe, um, you know, a little butterfly or something else flying up here, you know? I mean, don't be surprised next time if there's something up on this corner. <laughs> I'm adding to this journal after we've finished it. So now let's put the clasp on. And I use the clasp. The clasp is from this, this set of dies. Now, um, it just closes your journal. It's the, it's the journal clasp die set 5556. This is a great little clasp. I love it. And I kind of went back to it. We've, we've gotten some other one. Uh, we've gotten another one with a butterfly, but I also love this. Now, when you, when you, uh, cut this out, there's two score lines on here. So you want to fold along the score lines on here and you can, you can see where they are. So fold along those score lines right here. Like so. And then these little pieces, so there's two pieces, and you want to cut however many of these that you want to put on. You could do just one if you want. You could just close it with one clasp like that. I put two on mine, but you know, again, um, you could do as many as you want. Here's how they're glued on. They're glued on flush to the edge like this. Okay, that's really, really important. The glue only goes in one place, right here in the middle. Now, if you want to be exact, you could measure from the edge of your journal and get it right, you know, in the exact location. Um, I just eyeball it. 
So see that flush along the edge and just a glue right here. So just here, it's the only place the glue goes. That's so important. I can't say that enough. So I'll probably say it five more times. Only put the glue in the center. Okay, so right there. Let that attach. Like so. Now you want to take these little pieces and thread them through here. So that it's to the edge. Okay, just like that. And this one. Just thread it through. Okay, like this. Now you want to close your journal. Close your journal up like this and see how that will just come around to the back side. Okay, just like that. So make sure it's straight. When you close it up, make sure it's straight and then add a little bit of glue to the back, just here, just right here. Make sure it's straight. Make sure your journal is closed and straight and then fold it down and just glue it. Hold it for a sec. Same with the other one. So we're gonna do this one now. Just a little bit of glue right there. Fold that down, make sure it's straight, and then just hold it to the back. And that's how it works. So easy. Now you've got a really cute little clasp that will open and close your journal. Just like that. Okay, so now let's go to the inside page. So we're gonna go in here and we're going to cut out, um, we're going to glue in our accent pages. So this die is also in the journal set, this little one. And it just, it creates a background for all of your art. And you could have them both the same color, you could have different colors, it doesn't matter. Whatever you wanna do. And everything in this paper pack is gonna to go together. So it doesn't matter what combination uh, you pick up, it's going to go together and be so cute. So we'll glue this one in first, and then we'll glue this one in. And I just kind of, you know, make sure it's the same distance from the crease um, as the other one, and just make sure it's straight. Okay, like so. So now we've got our page, kind of got our page prepped. And now let's put our pocket in. Now the pocket comes in the journal set. So this little pocket comes part of the journal set. So if you have that, you will have this pocket. And it's so cute. I love this stripe. Is this just the cutest stripe? I think this is so cute. I love this paper, paper pack so much. So cute. It's perfect for these little gnomes. So now we're gonna fold this down along the score line. And then the glue goes on to the little tabs on the back. So score that really good, like so. And then we'll just add our glue to here and to here. And it will fit right uh, into the center of that little accent page. So you'll just see a little bit of that accent page on the edges but it's just, it fits perfectly in there. And this one, this little guy will go perfectly right over here. So let's glue this in. And I put it a little closer to the top um, so that I could put that sentiment in, um, that little banner down at the bottom. And I just used a little, foam dot. Where did I put that? Here it is. So use a little foam dot to pop this out. Like so. Pop that on there like that. And I use this little sentiment, smile, because you know what? You can't help but smile when you open this little journal with all this whimsical stuff in it. So cute. 
and then I'll just glue this on here. Whoops. In the center. And then we'll just put it, put it right here. And you could, you know, there's so many little sentiments that you could use in that set. It's a, just a great little set. And let's put this on here just like that. Smile. So cute. And then you could put your little snail on, you know, that little snail from the, um, the Mushroom Cubby set. That would be so cute. Now, one more piece and the little gnome. So here's how I made that little book, that little card. I just cut out another accent piece and then... Um, you could just fold it in half. This is just, just works great. It's such a cute little, it's just such a cute little card with a little message in it. And you could poke a little hole and tie a ribbon on it if you want to. You could kind of decorate it however, but how cute is it with this little guy on it? So cute. And of course the gnome set has a couple of sentiments in it too. Um, what does it say? Let's just look. It says, um, there's gnome one like you and friends, no matter what. How cute is that? Puns. Perfect little gnome puns. Okay, there we go. So we've got our little page done and we've got our cover done. And then next week, We'll do the inside two pages, and then we'll kind of see from there um, how many more to record and um, how many more lives to do. So let's close this up until next week. And then, you know what? I may add a few things to it by next week, but I'll show you if I do and tell you exactly how I did it. Is that just the cutest? These little gnomes are just so cute. And little mushrooms, like everything about this is easy. I love that. I love that they're quick and easy and easy to color. Okay, let me show you one more time what is in the bundle so that you can um, decide if that's what you want to do. Because uh, it is, um, it's a deal. Okay, so here is the paper pack. It is just the cutest. 24 sheets, two of each, um, each design and double-sided. So... They're all, they're different. Look how cute the back is. Just cute. I love these neutrals. I just love all of this so much. It's so cute. So the paper pack comes with it. Uh, obviously the gnomes. The gnomes come with the dies. So remember, stamps and dies included. This is a pretty big set. Uh, the mushrooms, which I love with the little mushroom house. Isn't that cute? And then um, the flowers, the large whimsical flowers, and the berries. So the strawberries and the blackberries come with that. And then the little houses. So the little fairy houses, um, those two. And then all the little sentiments, the little things sentiment set. So seven pieces in the bundle and it is ready to ship. So you guys will have your stamps by the time we do the live next week, uh, hopefully. And then you can follow along with me. 